This is our first Superflex Rookie Mock of the Year, and you will not believe where Anthony Richardson went. So, number one overall, Craig, this was your boy Bryce Young from Alabama. What made you decide to go with him over C.J. Stroud? So, Stroud's got more of the size, you know, that athleticism that you, you really like to see. Sort of like more the ideal quarterback in today's NFL, but there's some things just in terms of taking chances with the ball that I'm not as much of a fan of that it can be an issue in today's NFL. It really is splitting hairs. I'd say probably 90% of people out there sort of have Stroud and Young mm -hmm. uh, as their one and two. It's sort yep. of just preference. Young takes care of the ball more. Feels like he has a bit more maturity for today's NFL. Yes, he has a smaller frame, which is worrying some people, and I can understand that, but we've seen shorter quarterbacks be productive in today's NFL. I don't think that's as big of a deal. Again, they are sort of 1A, 1B for me. But if I was in this position, I'm not going to be in any of my super flex leagues, but I would be taking Young right now at one overall. Yeah, I don't have the number one pick. I have the number two pick in a super flex. But Bryce Young, I mean, you know, him and Stroud, Will Levis, these guys are all going to be at the top of a lot of people's boards throughout the entirety of this because they all have intangibles, talent. I mean, Bryce Young's done it at the highest level against great SEC talent. CJ Stroud, very similar against the Big Ten, minus the Wolverines, obviously. But otherwise, Really good choices here. And number two, Cody went with C.J. Stroud. You know, C.J. Stroud, like you said, brings the size. We can move around a little bit, but, I, you know, you don't necessarily always see him running. They don't plan for him to run. They want him to throw the ball first and foremost. Is there anything special about Stroud that you really like or that would cause you to be concerned about taking him at the two spot? I don't have a ton of concerns. Again, I'm taking whichever one probably falls to me in most super flex leagues if I'm in that position. He's a guy, again, that's just, and not to go off on a different tangent, but, you know, some of the stuff that he's done on the field has rubbed the people the wrong way. And you see that stuff pop up into NFL draft stuff every year about people's maturity and people change over time. We're certainly not who we were when we were 20 years old. But uh, some people go the other way in the NFL, too. And with all the distractions and money, there's going to be some level of concern with all these guys. It's how much do you buy into it. But as far as top two quarterbacks that you're looking at here, I'm, I would be comfortable taking either one of them. So, again, splitting hairs for me. Yeah, Ohio State, guys, it's always interesting. When they come out, there's a ton of hype. But then there's plenty of things about his game that, that could use a little bit of improvement. You know, I've seen people look at his footwork and some of the stuff he's yeah. got the arm talent he's got some of those intangibles that a team's going to look for so I, I wouldn't be surprised seeing him at either one or two depending on your flavor all right number three the running back the gem of this class Bijan robinson from texas des took him here he's an exciting pick i mean this guy has really been huge for years now everybody's been big about Bijan. Uh, do you expect to see him at the three spot super flex going forward? I think it's going to vary by league. There's going to be leagues where he's going to go one overall or go two overall just because of the talent that he has at a position where it, most people feel he's a can't miss prospect, you know, in the mold that we really haven't seen as much since Saquon came out. And, you know, Saquon ran into some health issues and, you know, some usage issues with possibly getting overworked. You run into that with these guys that just have uber talent and they go to a team where the, the team is going to be relying on them. So, I don't think landing spot really matters here. Even if he goes to a situation where there's an established running back, we know things change quickly in the NFL. You don't want to overthink stuff. And yep. he feels about as safe as you have a running back prospect in a while. You can do it all. Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple spots. I know a couple big games this year where he coughed up the ball, but he's really a can-miss prospect. I mean, he does a good job keeping the ball secure. He's electric. I mean, this guy can do it all. So it's he's an exciting prospect. Number four, Will Levis. I took him here because... In super flex, quarterbacks are always going at the top. You know, you normally see a couple of big name quarterbacks go at the top. I know last year's class was not as deep. There's going to be a lot of conversations because not only do we have the three here, Levis is doing it at Kentucky, which you don't typically see. Kentucky doesn't tend to produce high level quarterbacks, but Will Levis, I mean, he this year he was punching well above his weight class with the team he has around him. But then we even have, you know, Anthony Richardson, who's going to come out, Hendon Hooker, who is hurt. You know, you've got three, four, five quarterbacks that are probably going to be in the conversation for first round. Is there anything about Will Levis that stands out to you that that you like or dislike more than anything? Uh, you got to like his size, you know, that quarterback for the NFL today, you know, six foot three, 225 or whatever it is that can move around. He isn't just like one of those statue quarterbacks of years mm -hmm. past. The guy's got crazy arm talent when you're talking about, you know, Matthew Stafford type of arm or Josh Allen where the guy can just chuck it in and makes it look easy. Yeah. It's one of those things, too, like you said, with Kentucky, how does that necessarily translate? But I don't think you need to be at a big-name program. You know, that idea is sort of in the past. You've seen quarterbacks from small schools come out and do just fine. Or Brock Purdy more recently, Iowa State, 
he got drafted, uh-huh. but he was a high end guy that was recruited. You know, he ended up getting a scholarship from offer from Alabama, but he ended up going to Iowa State. You know, I don't look at school as much like what can they do with the ball. You're sort of projecting how are they going to look when they get to the NFL. So without having teams attached to it, yeah, I mean it makes sense to have if you have your quarterbacks this closely ranked to have another one in the top five. All right, at five we see another running back, Jamar Gibbs from Alabama. This is a guy that has been big, uh, been a big name, been kind of up and down. He comes from Alabama, though. People are going to jump all over Alabama running backs because they just they tend to get drafted high. Is there anything that you like or dislike more about a guy like Jamar Gibbs and, and even here in the top five of a super flex draft? Yeah, I mean, Gibbs is right up there in my, as far as running backs, my number two running back in this group, too. So it makes sense, again, at a position where there's a lot of scarcity for, you know, sort of that ideal running back that's going to get that large share and can handle it. Gibbs showed that going to Alabama this year that he can perform at that high level when he transferred there. And he's just a guy that he has the size. You know, he's like that six foot, 200 pound something. Uh Uh, He's able to get the ball like in his hands and just make plays happen, especially as a receiver. It's one of the things that stands out to him. Got quick feet, great contact, able to break tackles. Um, I think he's just, again, he's not Bijan, but you know, he could end up being better than him depending on the system that he gets into. Everyone that I'm seeing puts out that Alvin Kamara comp. You know, everyone loves that for Gibbs. Yeah. If you sort of think about could you get Kamara as a second running back in the draft or something, yeah, you'd like it. Um, without knowing teams, it's difficult because who knows how these guys get used. But if we're doing this, I, I love them here. Yeah, we, we love the PPR for our running backs. I mean, that's a huge get. And a guy like Gibbs is, is really good in the passing game. All right, we finally see our wide receiver go. Quentin Johnson from TCU. Quentin Johnson's one of those guys that, I mean, there's everybody has their flavor of wide receiver, but this guy produced really well at TCU with Max Dugan. He probably is more of your big vertical receiver because he's got great size. I think, what is he, he's 6'4", six, 6'3", six, something like that. He's got speed. He's got great hands. I mean, he, he did yep. it all at college. What do you think about Quentin Johnston. So it's one of those things where you try to put your biases aside. Um, man, I've been burned like I him a lot before. They just yeah. have that speed, size, athleticism combo where it just doesn't turn out in the NFL for whatever reason. But, you know, he, he's got the agility, burst, and acceleration that's rare for a guy of his size. He improved his mm-hmm. draft stock probably the most out of any of the wide receivers that had been considered sort of up in the top three, top four going into the season. A couple of the other ones we talked about haven't done much, whether it's because of injury or whatever else. And one of yep. them, you know, Keishon Boutte, he just said he's returning to school. So you, you're not going to see him on here, but he was a guy that had been considered top three wide receiver for this class. So Quentin Johnson does have some drop issues, quote unquote, you want to call it that, you know, it was on 13% or so. So right. something to think about, but again, if you have the work ethic and you're going to put it in, you can fix that stuff at the NFL. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, just size, skill, talent wise, he's what you want an ideal wide receiver for a big one. Absolutely. He's a, he's a fun one here. All right. At seven, the next guy. I mean, this is, this is a lot of people's one a right here, Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio state. I mean, there's really nothing to say every week he's on display. I mean, the guy's got the ability to take to the house from anywhere. He's going to be one of those guys that we've seen it come out last year, Garrett Wilson. I mean, Garrett Wilson made everybody in New York look better because as soon as he gets the ball, anything can happen with him running around the field. And I project this guy's probably going to be most people's wide receiver one, depending on landing spot, obviously. How do you feel about Jackson Smith and Jigba? He, he's smart. He's got great body control. He can separate easily out there. Again, how much are you going to put into just playing, you know, what is it, a handful of games this year? Was it five or something like that? He had great second year especially and if the nfl allowed such things he'd already be playing in the nfl instead of back here and is it going to hurt him we're going to have to see but even other players that have gotten hurt and maybe not done as much you know this last draft class we saw these guys just get taken high because the nfl sees these three four wide receiver sets as more valuable and you can get a guy of his skill set a team like detroit your team they were fine sitting on jameson williams until week 13 or 14 whatever it was right. so um, I, I still think he's certainly going to be a first-round NFL draft pick and that he's probably well worth it in super flex. If you can get him in the middle of the first round, I think you'd have to be happy with that, with what he's shown at Ohio State. All right, next up, Jordan Addison. I took him because he's he's one of my favorite receivers in this class. He's got the size, got the speed. I mean, he you know, he's a USC receiver. I mean, anymore, they almost you know, stamp him out and they all have that talent. I think he can be a big play threat. I think a team could use him as their top option. I think he gives you 
the ability to be your wide receiver two, three, potentially from year one on. But, I mean, this early in the process landing spot is going to be a very big determinant. How they do throughout the draft process will be fun. It'll be fun to pull the receipts on this episode and see how far off we are. What do you think about a guy like Jordan Addison? I mean, for the top three receivers we talked about here in a row, it's sort of a take your pick and what order do you like these three? Most people have these three as their top three right now. He's got a lot of twitch in him. He's able to make quick cuts. He explodes to get the ball. I forget the term, of course, because I'm not one of the young kids anymore. But he's got angry hands where he goes out there, sort of like in a photo. He goes up, he gets the ball at the high point, but he has that mind sort of mentality. Though injuries, you know, how much is that going to play into it? Because he had that leg injury. He was out for a while. He came back for a couple games at the end of the season. Wasn't anything amazing overall, but he clearly he had that talent. And he's an ideal receiver in today's NFL as well. So I like all three of these guys. Kendra Miller, or it's either Kendra or Condre Miller from TCU. You'll see plenty of TCU players fantasy-wise drafted this year because the offense really produced well. I mean, Max Dugan's a guy that people will want to consider as well because he's got talent. Miller's an interesting choice in the first round. I was really surprised when when you made the pick, and I would love to hear your thoughts on why you made this pick here. I like him a lot. He has good size for today's NFL. You know, he's got the again six foot, you know, two twenty five sort of pounds. He's great at yards after contact. You know, it's over three and a half, I think, yards per contact this past year. He's light on his feet. He's got great moves. Again, the, the whole contact part of it, and he's just got good burst. His speed isn't like you know the top top end speed, but he's got quality speed, and he just showed this year after Zach Evans left that he could be a main guy in a pro-style offense, and yeah, he's jumped up people's boards quite a bit, but I think it's well worth it, and mm-hmm. you know, I have him personally as my third running back in this draft class right now. Well, there you go. Ten, Anthony Richardson, quarterback from Florida. This one is going to be interesting, and this is going to be one that people debate a lot. I mean, in some of the big-time matchups, he did not show up as well. You know, he destroyed some competition. He had some ups and downs, but he's also probably one of the younger quarterbacks in this group, especially when it comes to the playing time. He just hasn't gotten as many reps as some of these other guys. So he's going to be an interesting name to watch throughout this process, how fantasy writers like ourselves and and some of the other folks in the community really determine what they do with him. Is he a first-round pick? Does he slide? Does the NFL let him slide like a guy? I mean, look at like a Malik Willis type. Everybody was hype on him, and then he slid down because he went somewhere and got to be a backup. What do you think about Anthony Richardson? What's your gut tell you? Like you said, a lot of it matters where he goes and what their plan is for him. If you go out there and you throw him into the fire right away, he's not going to be what people think he could be. But when you're drafting someone in fantasy football, you're projecting, all right, you know, in two or three years, what is this guy going to be in the NFL at that point? You're not going to be projecting, as much as I love to see it, a Geno Smith type renaissance, you know, in year 10 or whatever it is. You (laughs) got to be thinking, um, if you held on to your Geno shares, uh, more power to you. I didn't. But Uh, Richardson's, you know, he's got that all-world athleticism. You know, you see stuff on the field that makes you think, oh, my gosh, this guy could be the quarterback one at some point. But you also see stuff that could say this guy could end up on a street free agent, you know, after three years. Or could be a wide receiver tight end. (laughs) Yeah, there's so many different things that can happen with him. But if you're projecting him as a quarterback, you know, you're thinking, all right, could he be the next Lamar? That's what everyone would love to see. But then, like you said, is he going to be the next Malik Willis? He's going to be hotly debated. We're not here to do that. But if you're projecting out on uh, top end what he could be, it does make sense to have him pre-NFL draft in the first round here. Josh Downs from UNC. This is another guy that people have been high on. UNC's produced some really solid receivers for NFL value over the last couple of years. They haven't necessarily broken out, but they've been draftable. And at least so far, a couple of years in, they haven't broken out yet, but there's plans, the potential, you know, like a Diami Brown type guy. Josh, Josh Downs, I think, is better than most of what's come out of UNC recently. I think he's got a chance to really uh, shine, you know, with his athletic profile and, and what he can do. Is there anything that you like or dislike about a guy like Josh Downs? He's a little bit smaller, you know, than some of these people like to see in their wide receivers. He's like 5'10", like 180, something like that. Uh, but athleticism wise read somewhere that he had like a four four five something like that in high school he's jumped 42 inches in high school you know as far as the high jump stuff like that he's got a great catch rate for the college player how our physical corner is going to treat him stuff like that but if the guy can get separation in today's nfl that isn't as big of a deal as we've seen so he's a guy that's risen up a lot he's been productive the past two years 
this year, even with missing a few games. Definitely in one QB leagues, I expect him to go in the first round, but certainly in super flex leagues, depending on how those quarterbacks play out, I think it does make sense that you see him here initially at the end of our first round. Yeah, for sure. And number 12, I went Sean Tucker, running back from Syracuse, one of my favorite running backs in this draft class. I've been I've been a big fan of him. If you're in any Debbie leagues with me, I drafted him last year everywhere I could get him. Huge fan, huge fan. Here, I also consider Michael Mayer, you know, tight end from Notre Dame. You know, the back half of the first round from kind of from eight on, I would start considering Michael Mayer because he is an amazing tight end. I think he's probably going to step in and be a starter wherever he goes and really becomes a fantasy relevant option year one. So that would make me consider him anywhere from kind of eight on in a one QB or super flex. But I went Sean Tucker here because running back is king. I mean, if you can if you can find a really nice running back, like a guy like a Sean Tucker, this kid can do it all. He's physical. He can be a pass catcher out of the backfield. I don't know that he's necessarily at the same level as Bijan or Jamar. I think he is kind of that next tier down, which is why I would take him as one of my next ones. I don't mind Miller. I don't mind Tucker. However, you you put him here. Is there anything special about Tucker or anything you like or dislike about him? He's just extremely physical. You know, it's something you don't see as much in today's NFL where one of the guys that it seems like he likes contact. He's got great size. You know, he's like 5'10", 210 pounds. Uh, he was a champion in the 100 and 200 meter sprints in high school. So he's got great speed. Again, a guy that you're looking at and like, yeah, this makes sense to have him here in the first round. And certainly he can move up depending on how he tests because the NFL still pays attention to that sort of stuff and where he goes and drafts, you know, is he going to be a second round pick? Is he going to fall to the fourth round? We've seen that stuff does matter to NFL teams, yep. but going into this, he certainly could be a three down back if a team wanted to be using him that way based on what we've seen at Syracuse. Hey, click right here so that you don't miss any great 2023 rookie content.